Fantastic. Everyone has the right to his or her own true conclusion. In other words, it's overcome by relativism. And this is what's very heavy, and this is what we're dealing with right now. This time and this hour. Relativism is true. What you believe it to be. It eliminates consideration of God in or any affairs of society. In other words, they do not believe in absolutes. It's whatever they want to believe, and that's what it is. This is what we're dealing with right now. This is what we're battling with right now. This is what we're facing right now. That people are compromising the word of God. People are watering down the word of God. People do not stand for truth, for absolutes. And that's what we stand for. And you need to know that. And this is what we need to instill within our children. This is what needs to be inside our homes. That you know what? The word of God is truth. The word of God teaches us to do the right thing. Teaches us how not to do the wrong thing. Relativism has groomed a culture that does not believe in absolutes of right and wrong, but is merged with pluralism that tolerates everything. The Bible says in Proverbs 14, 12, there's a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is destruction. We have to... Parents, if I can urge you, if I can challenge you, if I can encourage you, if I can tell you anything, I tell you this, is that it's so important that we take the responsibility to communicate the absolutes to our children. To communicate to this generation that has been made to believe that relativism rules. One of our greatest challenge is to convince our kids and even people that God's word is the roadmap of living life. You know, don't you ever find yourself in that place? You know what I mean? Like, you know, with your children or loved ones, family members or whatever. It's like, you know, you try to take a stand or you, you, you say something that the word of God says and then boom, they counteract it. You know what I mean? It's like, and then you're like, what? You know what I mean? It's like, they, it, 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 it's like they throw you for a loop, you know what I mean? But no, you know what the truth is. You stand for it. You hold on to your convictions. You know, don't let them distract you and, and, and make you think like, oh no, whatever you think, whatever you feel, then that's the truth. No, that's not the truth. That is a lie. And you need to know that, and we need to teach our children this. I don't care how, like I said, how young they are or how old they are. We stand for the truth. By saying, oh, you know what, our kids aren't that bad. It's okay if they go over there with their friend from school to the party. You know, my kid's a good kid. You know, it's, really? You know what I mean? Who's influencing who? You know what I mean? The Bible clearly says, abstain from all appearances of evil. You know what I mean? If it's not a godly party, it ain't, ain't no party at all. Because if God it ain't in the picture, well then who reigns in that party? You know, it's like we got to hold on to what is truth, what is right. And they're really little simple things, but sometimes the enemy makes it be like it's a big issue. But real, really, it is a big issue. Because our children's lives are at stake. Their future is at stake. Their calling is at stake. And people nowadays even have this, this philosophy of, oh, let them make their own decisions. That's how they're going to learn. No. We as parents, we have the responsibility, look at your neighbor, we got the responsibility to say no, and we have the responsibility to tell them, you know, to direct them, to guide them, amen, not to control their lives but to let them know what's up ahead, but to let them know that there's consequences for some of the decisions that they're making or they're, they're about to make. And sometimes it seems like we're gonna be like a broken record, continue to repeat ourselves and repeat ourselves. And that's okay because sometimes we have to hear it over and over and over again. How many times have you read the word of God? How many times have you read a scripture maybe about a hundred times? Yeah, because we need to hear it over and over and over again. And in the same way, we need to tell them over and over and over again what we believe in, what we stand for, 
what we're all about. Amen? Shema, you gotta be you know, like you know, like one of the sisters preached yesterday. Sometimes we're called to be policemen. You know, we gotta be on guard, we gotta be on the lookout, we gotta see what's going on. Again, the Bible says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who built it. We always gotta include God in the equation. Because how many know that a house divided among itself, it's going to fall. And sometimes the enemy will come and he'll try to cause division. He'll try to cause parents against parents. He'll try to cause children against children. He'll try to cause siblings against siblings. How many know what I'm talking about? Oh, oh yeah, you come from the perfect family. But I know in my family, and I know in a lot of your families too, that the enemy is always there trying to divide, trying to destroy the family unit. But the Bible says in Matthew 7, and this is Jesus, he's given us the parable. In Matthew 7, uh, verse 24, it says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descends and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these saints of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, and it fell, and great was its fall. And so it was when Jesus ended these sayings, that the people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one of having authority and not as scribes. See, Jesus knows what the truth is because he is the truth and he tells it the way it is. He is straight out. He doesn't sugarcoat anything, okay? He doesn't make it easy. And sometimes that's the way we need to be as parents. We can't sugarcoat down the word of God. Amen. We need to tell it the way it is. We need to tell it straight out. And how many know, you know, you know how to be straight out. Come on now. Don't try to act all, you know, oh, me, you know. No, you know what, me, If you do this, this is what's going to happen. I'm just saying, you know. Oh, mom, I don't want to hear. No, you're going to hear it because I have to tell you. You know, sometimes we want to be religious parents. Say one thing and do another. Oh. Reading the Bible but not applying it. Like the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 5 and 7, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of it. See, the word of God is there so it can change us, so it can teach us. So it can encourage us. So it can build us up. So it can uh, spank us if it needs to. So it could, you know, it, I mean, whatever you need it to be, it's there for you. You just got to apply it in your life. You just got to apply it in your home. You just got to apply it with your children, with your family. Practice what we preach, amen? Um, and verse 2. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow, for so he gives his beloved sleep. And in verse 2, it's teaching us that we have to teach our kids who our provider is. We have to teach our kids that we are blessed because God has blessed us. The things we have is because God has provided for us. Yes? Dad goes out to work, or mom goes out to work, but God has provided that for us. And that's why we have the things that we have. Because sometimes, nowadays kids, man, like they want everything. You know what, they don't, they don't want just a little Tonka truck toy. No, they want a laptop and an apple at that. A Mac or whatever it's called, the difficult one. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, they want all this technology stuff. You know what I mean? But it's like, we can't just easily hand it over to them on a silver platter because then they become ungrateful. They become spoiled. And they just think that they automatically got it coming. But we need to teach them 
and that God is the one that provides. God is the one that meets our needs. God is the one that will bless them. That we're able to sleep at night because our trust is in God. That we're able to have a restful night because we're not worrying like, you know, some people that, you know what I mean, like it says, you know, um, um, that they rise up early and sit up late. You know what that's talking about? That's talking about people that are always like, I gotta go to work, I gotta get a job, I gotta get another job, I gotta make more money, I gotta do this. That sometimes they're not able, they're not even able to enjoy the things that they have. They're not even able to enjoy the food that they have. They're being robbed of their sleep to pay their cares or the things that they've accumulated. How many know what I'm talking about? And then there's us that don't make a whole lot of money, that sometimes don't even have two nickels to rub together, but yet we have bills to stack of this high, and yet we turn to God, pray to God, cry out to God, and say, you know what, God? I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know where the money is going to come from, but all I know is that you are my God, you are my Jehovah Jireh, and you are my provider, and you are the one that's going to have to meet this need, because I just don't got it. And you know what? We're the ones that sleep all good at night. You know why? Because we already gave our problems to God. Now we just got to see him take action. And trust me, he takes action. And I'm going to share this, you know, not, not because, you know, I don't want to do all oh, four and three, no, no. It's not about that. I, this is, see, because this is my perspective. This is the way I see things. You know, remember last week when we had a regional service and they blessed us with a card and they blessed us with money? You know, right away, you know, my first instinct was like, ooh, get away, you know what I mean? But then my second instinct was like, God, are you providing for the bills that we have? Because I'll tell you, it was almost to the penny yeah. of the money that we got, that's how much bills we had. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I'll tell you, even my husband, so right away I go and I pay all the bills, you know, it's like, oh, thank you, Lord. I looked at it as God providing for us. You know, and sometimes it's like that. You know that people will go and bless you. People will go and give you a Pentecostal handshake and right away say, like, ooh, movies, let's go eat or whatever. But yet, you know, we have this need or we have this event that, that we need to go to. You gotta change your perspective and you gotta begin to see like, God, are you blessing me because you're trying to meet a need here? See, sometimes we have to change our perspective, you know. And um, but I'll, I'll tell you, you know, um, by the end of the week, I, I was already my car went into empty, and I tell my husband, my car's not empty. You know, and he's like, "Well, you got the money," and I'm like, "What money?" And he goes, "You got money, sister." I go, "Where?" Like that, and then he goes, "Well, what happened to the money they gave us?" I said. Psh gone and he's like that's cold you didn't even give me a dollar and then i go so then i started thinking like okay where exactly did all the money go and so i started writing everything down to the dollar and i had ten dollars left and then he goes well can i have the ten dollars <laughs> He got us still 